Hi everyone, welcome back to another game in our series. Again, we're going to go for this Knight C3 G3 Vienna. So we tried this last game and we got a, nice, a pretty nice position in general. F5 is a little bit unusual. So we're playing a King's Gambit. So we can take it and play Bishop G2. This would win us a tempo on the b7 pawn could also play the move pawn to pawn here I'm just gonna take it and then play bishop to g2 this gets us a temper which is useful the pawn will go to d3 as always and then we'll follow through with knight e2 h3 and then go for f4 again Let's play h3. Because if, if we castle first, then I think... I think black can play queen d7. So this just prevents queen d7. If queen d7 now, I can shuffle the king across to h2. This is... Um, generally the position we're aiming for as white. We could have also maybe played g4 and f4 again. This would have been another option, but I'm going to try and keep the g pawn back this time. Try to play f4. E4? E4 is just a blunder, isn't it? So we just take the pawn. It's... Yeah, it's, it's undefended. So that's just a free pawn. Yeah, I've noticed with um, 10 flat time controls, with no extra time added, that opponents will make a lot more mistakes. So if you're playing a time control where you don't have extra time, it's a little bit different from, say, 15, 10 or one of those time controls because definitely your opponents will make a lot more mistakes so you sort of need to use the clock to your advantage a little bit more there I played knight to d5 just to hit the pieces and try to provoke black in capturing which he did and now there's a beautiful square here on e6 for my knight I can go knight d4 knight e6 and since there's no light squared bishop, it's completely unchallenged. So I can play the move knight into e6. So this pawn is being protected by the bishop, so that's fine. And we also have this plan, of course, of pushing our kingside pawns up the board. So I could take this, but I really want to put my knight into the e6 square. So I'm probably not going to take it right away. We'll play knight e6 first. Just to hit the rook. I also want to just overprotect this pawn. So c4 is most likely the follow-up and maybe even f5 cement this knight in and then we can start pushing these pawns up the board so over protect this pawn okay so knight b5 i suppose black wants to play the knight to c7 to try to challenge this knight on e6 but we can just overprotect this knight with the pawn in f5, start pushing these pawns up. We can also chase this knight away with a4. And this is protected. I don't see any reason why we can't just start the attack. So we go g4. So it takes. So we could take this way, we could take this way. 
Well, principally, it's probably better to take this way because you open up your bishop and you also get a huge pawn majority on the king side. So it's going to be a lot more dangerous if we take like this because this way we can start pushing these king side pawns immediately. We're getting checked. Can we play bishop to f4 in this position? Bishop to f4. I suppose he plays bishop to d6. So bishop f4, bishop to d6. Then can we capture the knight? Threatening. Threatening to push the pawn. It recaptures back at some point, and maybe there's some queen g4 check after we move our king. It's possible. We could also just move our king, but then the knight comes into comes into this square. Then maybe we can take, 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 and then f6. It does look pretty good for us. So this does look pretty good. You could also maybe just play bishop f4, bishop d6 takes, queen takes, and then king h1 because the knight can't go to e4 in that case. I think this is the easiest one because then the knight has no moves. Then we just take and play king h1. So you can't get knight e4 here because bishop takes and it's pinned and the knight has no square so it's trapped. So we can just take here. Queen. I think I just moved the bishop back. And then. Oh, I suppose we just push our pawns just Push the pawns up the board. And then we have e7 as well coming. E7, F7. There's no way to stop the pawns. Let's push. straight queens and okay so again we get into this Vienna type of setup that we were playing last game so same sort of thing h3 king h2 and then we go from pawn to f4 so most likely what should have happened is pawn takes on f4 and then probably we take back with either knight, the knight or the bishop, not sure which one. Maybe the knight just because you can put the knight into the f4 square. But this also develops the bishop, so it's probably fine as well. Um, with a roughly you know, equal position, it's, um, it's okay. But after our opponent blundered with the move pawn to e4, then of course we... Oh, completely winning here. So we play the move knight to d5. It's important that you don't get um, too carried away too quickly. Just be careful moves like f5 
you can play it, but just, just watch out for uh, weakening these sort of squares around your um, center with e5 and so on. But of course you can go immediately for something like this and it should be very, very strong as well. But I just wanted to stop anything from black happening on d5. I also controlled the e5 square so the knight doesn't hop into there. And instead we went for this e6 square and supported it. And once we got a very nice knight on um, e6 and not much counterplay from black, then we started uh, pushing our pawns up the board with f4 and g4, which is of course um, our plan in this opening all along. So I hope you all enjoyed this game. Um, thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.